Do you want to get free stuff or make some cash on the internet? Well, you probably want something called a media kit. A media kit helps you pitch to brands to get some of that sponsored content coin. And in this video, I'm gonna show you on an actual influencer how to build one step-by-step. Step. I'm actually gonna hop on a call with my friend Cheyenne. She has over 25,000 subscribers. So if you guys wanna see more about how to build a media kit, let's jump right in. Hi! <laughs> So, media kit today, what's going on? Tell me what's your goal, hopefully with your media kit, where do you wanna go? So I figured a media kit would just allow me to work with brands that genuinely like align with what I believe in and what I care about and like the message of my channel in general. Awesome, so you made a media kit for me to roast and we're also going to together make it better. For people who don't know, maybe you can just tell people what content you typically make. So I make what I eat in a day videos, what I eat in a week videos. I love to cook, so that's the reason why I post those. I also vlog my life as a college student. I also love to travel as well. So anytime I'm on the road, I'm filming that as well. Let's go. Yeah, me and Cheyenne met over Instagram DM and we've been working together for a bit. So I'm excited to finally have a friendship with you and now ruin it with my critiques. <laughs> You're gonna rip apart my heart, dude. <laughs> like, this is trash. No, 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 no. Do we want to just jump right in? I guess we could just start. To be completely honest, I'm starting from scratch here. I don't really know what a brand would want to see. My only experience creating anything like this is like resume for or like real life jobs. So I don't even know what where to start. All right, so off the bat, let's just start with the first page. My main feedback is the images. I would say a little bit closer up, but more clear on your face, maybe having food in the background. This is a great image, but it doesn't really describe Cheyenne's content. Having photos that correlate to who you are are important, but that's a minor detail. The biggest thing that I have noticed about this is going to the second page. So this is the problem with not you. <laughs> it's just most Canva templates. Most Canva templates put out really pretty numbers, but brands, how do I say it? They just want to make sure you're not bullshit. So they like screenshots. Like if you're putting 60,000 viewers, maybe screenshot it and put it next to it. For some reason, it's just more believable. And especially with a lot of fake influencers, they love that. Literally, I've had a lot of pitches with brands and they're always like cute media kit, but like, let me see the screenshots. So it just makes it easier when you have it all in one. And my last feedback is kind of coming up with, you know, Cheyenne's little summary page. I think you're who am I and what do I do? I know that Canva actually has it as a template, but I think we can sharpen a little bit about the message of why you're compelling to a brand. I think you have all the right elements, but adding these three things, we're gonna make it more beefed up so you can work with those brands that you really want to. Looking at a grand scheme of things, I think I give it a nice five out of 10. We're gonna make it a nice 10 out of 10 in about a few minutes. Not bad, not bad. <laughs> you have all the information. We're just gonna make it even better and expand on it. Okay, great, yeah. So I guess the easiest thing is like photos of you. Let's just start with the first thing. I think it's the easiest, most fun. Okay, so I had this one as well, which is like closer up. No, that one's good. You know how in your media kit, there's like a second page. I would personally add that as maybe an image. If you have another picture of you with a smoothie bowl, even better. But I think that would actually get people to like kind of resonate with that brand. Now, if you don't want to do food directly, I know a lot of people don't necessarily want to just like brand it like that. That's just one example of what you could put on it just so there's like a, a mixture of photos. Oh, that cows this. Yeah. Some pizza. Oh my God, that's a nice pizza. So now let's go into step two and three, which is gonna actually be the longest part. Before we go into getting screenshots and all that data that I recommend for you to bring to a brand, let's just read first of all your, you know, who am I? So I hated this in school when people like, you know, when the teacher asks you to like read a paragraph for the class. That's okay. I was always the first volunteer. All right, can you read me the who am I and the what do I do? The who am I says, I am a 20 year old full-time college student with a passion for veganism and culinary creativity. Born and raised in the New York City metro area, I now attend school outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My other interests include the outdoor, <laughs> sustainability, and being an active member of the Baha'i faith. So that's just like what I do. It's not, it's probably not relevant to brands, or maybe it is relevant. <laughs> okay, keep, keep going. So what do I do? Through my blogs and Instagram posts, I strive to be a person that younger audiences can not only go to for advice, but also be a source of inspiration for anyone who wants to make the world a better place one step at a time. Ooh. Ooh, wait, that was good, Cheyenne. I like your what do I do? Your who am I kind of gives me Tinder profile vibe. <laughs> Like, let's be, let me, let me put that into context. So it gives me that Tinder vibe because it's more about like, do you want to go on a date with me type of thing? That's actually hilarious considering I literally haven't been single in like five years. 
who am I to a brand, right? They're looking for two things. Are you a good match for the product? Do you like believe in it? And B, does your audience also believe in it? Do you feel like the what do I do could be in the who am I? I think your what do I do is your who am I? Yeah, and then like, I need more concrete stuff for the what do I do. When you're creating an overview or like a who am I, you basically want to think about what are the things that represent me? And for a brand, that's important because a lot of times brands look for an ideal audience. And if you guys have the same interests, they're more likely to work with you. So with that, this is Cheyenne's new bio. Cheyenne Hayden is a college student and sustainability advocate who creates vegan lifestyle content. Her mission is to help young audiences make the world a better place one step at a time. She's currently based in the New York City metro area and attends Swarthmore College. Her most popular video has hit 1 million views in less than six months. Oh, if I was Whole Foods, take my money. Okay, we got it. So I would break up your media kit into four parts. I would do your cover page, your overview page, and then your YouTube and Instagram page. I think your overview page is fine. So then in statistics, I really like what you did. Unique monthly viewers and then monthly viewers. I think those are honestly really great pieces of data, but just because it's so similar and on your overview page, you don't want to add so much. So I would only do monthly viewers total. Monthly viewers are number one. I would also say the likes for photos, story views, and then I would say your overall age and gender and location. Now, this is an extra hack I really want to add for people who have already worked with brands. Cheyenne, you've done a brand deal in the past, correct? I like a bunch, yeah. The last thing you want to add in your media kit, which I call optional just because some people don't have it yet, is you want to write down who you worked with. This is massive social proof, I'm telling you, because it shows that you're not just, you're not playing around. Moving forward, I'm going to talk about this third and fourth page we're adding to your media kit, just giving you advice on what to add on screenshots. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what to include on your detail page. Your detail page is basically more screenshot analytics that your overview doesn't capture. So for your detail page, you really wanna include the top five things. You wanna include basically what I call just views. So screenshots of literally, like I would not even try to make it fancy and try to like make it aesthetic. Like what I would personally say is screenshot like your average views. So if you don't have it, like just put a day in a life video that's kind of like you would say it's performing on an average level and just screenshot that. So you want to put the views. Then you want to actually add a screenshot of your keywords. Now, this sounds really weird. If you get an account on TubeBuddy, if you search the name Cheyenne Hayden, it pops up the most used tags that Cheyenne uses. And the reason why this is important is because it tells the brand what keywords that Cheyenne is currently dominating. For example, if it was a snack company, they literally spend money on Google to buy the word vegan. So if you can show them, hey, I literally have 42% of my videos with the keyword vegan, it's gonna signal to them like, wow, that's super valuable because I would pay for that anyways. The next thing I would say, screenshots of your audience demographic. So literally don't try to make it fancy, screenshots of age, gender, and location. Now, the last thing is other creators. If you are like Cheyenne or any other creator and that you have made a few videos, you probably know what type of creators are similar to. So honestly, Cheyenne, if you wanna name three other YouTubers that are kind of in the vegan or like just call a shoot in the niche, you wanna name three or four people that are similar to your channel because it helps a brand identify where do you, like say they worked with, for example, Emma Chamberlain, and you mentioned that you're similar to them, they're gonna signal, okay, I can trust her and I wanna work with her. This is a really good hack if you are especially talking to new brands that have never really seen your work, it's really helpful to add that in. So you can just say like, suggest similar channels to this. And I would name three or four of them, just over text, you don't have to add screenshots for this, but it's really helpful to give the brand context. All right, so with that for YouTube, that's all. Now for Instagram, you really want to do the same thing, but for the following things. You wanna screenshot likes, story views, same thing with demographics, like age, gender location and engagement rate. So what engagement rate is, is essentially typically it's how many comments and likes you get for your follower ratio. So for example, if you have 10,000 followers and you get a thousand likes, that's 10% engagement ratio. So basically I would try to figure out what that number is for you on average. If you don't know, I use a tool called social rank. It's actually my friend's company. It just tells brands that, Hey, I, I have followers, but I also get likes and it gives them a comparison tool. So that's another helpful tip. I would also add specifically to your Instagram page. The final thing I would add to your Instagram and YouTube, if you have this number, is your click-through rate. Now, for a lot of new beginning people with media kits, this don't really listen to me at all. But for people that have worked with brands before, and you know what I'm talking about, when a brand gives you an affiliate link and you get to put in your bio, some brands, you can reach back out to them and ask them, hey, how many people clicked on the link? I've personally done that with a few brands, and they told me, you know, Jade, you get 10,000 views and you drive around 400 people to our site. So that is a 4% click-through rate, and that number is money. 
And of course, it's not all about money, but like you said, as a creator, you want to provide value to any brand you work with, vice versa, right? So if you're able to provide that number, reach out to a brand and literally ask them, how is my click-through rate or what is that? They will most likely tell you and you can add that to your media kit. All right. And once you add all that, you add your photos that you feel like it could represent you. I would just, you know, maybe each page has a nice photo. You don't have to, but I definitely think that a point of a media kit is really to tell the brand, you know, what content you make and who is your audience. That's all they care about. You know, a media kit's simple. You don't have to add too much text. The more screenshots and images, the better. And what we did for Cheyenne is simplified her message. We're going to add more screenshots and gave her a little bit more of a strategic look for her pictures. Cheyenne, how do you feel? I feel great. I feel like you really just laid it all out for me. I'm very excited to just go for it. I feel like this media kit is definitely going to give me a leg up in terms of communicating with brands. Now that I have this asset, or once we finish workshopping it, it'll make it a lot easier to get my foot in the, in the door into opportunities that were definitely always there, but were probably not as open to me as before. But yeah, I don't I don't have any other questions, I don't think. <laughs> that, I did a good job then. High five, Cheyenne. High five, yeah, you did a great job. <laughs> All right, what we're going to do, guys, is Cheyenne's going to email me when she finishes it, and I will look over for a final glance and reveal the final final product. Thank you, Cheyenne. Thank you, Jade. All right, guys. So it's a few days later. I have here Cheyenne's media kit. I'm going to show you guys everything from the new contents, the upgraded bio. You guys are about to be stoked. But I want to quickly say that I look like shit right now because I wanted to get this video as quickly as possible up because I'm donating a portion, actually all of the AdSense from this video to the Black Lives Matter Foundation. I know how easy it is to, you know, just look at social media and not do anything. So I hope this encourages you to also take action, sign petitions. You don't need to go to a protest if you are like scared of the coronavirus. So yeah, just wanted to let you guys know that. And yeah, media kits sometimes are super shallow. So I hope this <laughs> encourages you to do something meaningful with the money that you might make from the brand deals. Okay, so the Cheyenne Hayden media kit looks like this. We have a beautiful updated overview page before Cheyenne's bio didn't reflect who she was. Now Cheyenne is taken seriously by brands and can actually really understand who she is. We have highlighted follower counts, all the statistics six are here and we have screenshots for every single part of her social medias this really makes Cheyenne more of a believable and trustworthy creator and brands really love it when they see all these reports so you can see all the analytics not just followers but the in-depth analysis of their audience's interests this is key for brands to really take you seriously and give you the money that you deserve to reach the audience that they want so that is a Cheyenne's updated media kit I'm so excited for Cheyenne to grow her business and her brand through the media kit and I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you guys want to be the next comment winner, all you gotta do is just comment below. Let me know if this video was helpful. Hey, and request below who I should flip next. I'm thinking to continue the series with other YouTubers who want me to renovate their media kit, social media strategy, anything like that. Let me know in the comments if you have people you'd like to see next. All right. Love you guys so much and I'll see you guys later. Bye.